<laughs> Ladies and gents, welcome back once again. All things covered. Patrick Peterson, Brian McFadden got another jam packed show for you guys right now. You guys know how we rock and roll, entertaining, informative. Man, we love breaking bread with you guys, talking football, talking life, talking entertainment. And we got another jam packed show, like I said, for you guys. I guess when you look down on the screen, you see him already. No other than 12 year vet, all with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Two time. Super Bowl champion, Louisiana Lafayette alum, my former teammate and now NFL scout with the Pittsburgh Steelers, no other than my brother from another mother, I Taylor. Yeah, money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Riding around the city, plastic cup of C Rock. Bigger and I'm blacker. I am on that Chris Rock. All right, tight. How you doing? How you feeling? Man, we call that the B fam. Brothers from another mother, man. But y'all know what time it is. It's, it's B Mac, the one and only. It's Pat Pete, the one and only. We got two South Florida, four Lauderdale living legends I'm talking to right That's now. Up. So I'm all the way good. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, 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 Pat P, man, buckle up. This gonna be a, this gonna be a good ride right here. Buckle up, Let's baby. Get it, man. Buckle I'm up. ready. I'm no ready. Hey, I, there's so much we're gonna tap into in, into with, with, but let's Chat start. All, let's go back to the beginning, right? Let's go okay. back to the beginning. You know, you attended Marion Amberson Senior High School in New right. Orleans, right? right? You played basketball. You played football. Of course, you made it known on the football field. Ex, ex, right. Super athletic. Now, I know you played running back. I know you played cornerback. But the right. little birdie told me you also played defensive end. And you were right. the place kid. Right. So how, it's, how big it's, were you it's, playing it's, D line? How big were you? <laughs> uh like 155, 160 playing, setting that edge. Setting what edge? <laughs> setting the edge in a in a full three defense. You were so, setting so, edge? <clears throat> yeah. So so what it was, speaking of edge, big Eddie, big Eddie was like Jason Gilded in high school. So big mm -hmm. Eddie, the other defensive end, he was like. Six four, probably two forty, two forty five, defensive end. I was playing the up the opposite side of Eddie, like six, one fifty five, one sixty. But Mac, I was like so, so uh, I was super aggressive, and I really didn't care about no size. So I come around the edge. I'm like, man, if I can get to these boys before they get to me, and we talking about offensive line, and I'm like, mm -hmm. man, them boys need a head start, so I can go out on shoot, cut, get low before they even get out they stand. So I'm all the way good. So we had two corners and two safeties at the time in high school. Them boys real, them boys real decent. That was my first time ever like really playing high school football. And coach was like, man, if you need, if you want to get on the field, you got to play DN. I said, mm. shit, say less. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did, man. I played, I played DN now. To be honest with you, I was probably like the six or seven best dude on the squad we had so many good athletes on the team because they played basketball football and baseball as well so i was like damn man i just want to get in while i finish so i wound up just playing dn mm -hmm. in high school we ran that wing t offense so i was the wing back in the wing t offense but i was the dn when it came down to the defense and you know back in the day we ain't know nothing about you know no timeouts and not going both ways or not, uh, uh, asking for some water. So at the time, the only time we got water, Mac and P was doing the timeout. And yep, the only right. time we didn't go both ways is if you was like seriously hurt. So mm -hmm. we just knew coming from our coach what they said, what the what the colleges were saying when it came to them, how many positions he played and do he go both ways. So mm -hmm. really, I just took my hat to way back in the day, the old school way, like you played both ways mm -hmm. if you was a superior athlete. But at the time, I came to much live, Mac and Pete. Like, man, I had a whole squad full of athletes. They were just into some other stuff other than football. Yeah, coming yeah. up, where I came up with, but yeah, I was probably about the six or seven best dude on the team at the time. Man, we we can all can definitely uh, relate to that story as far as you know being around a bunch of guys in high school and not really having their head on straight to get them to the next level. But um, you end up walking on at Louisiana right. Lafayette. Right. Um, what made you walk onto the football team? And also, two-part question, how did it feel when you earned your scholarship in 2001? Man, being a knucklehead, when I came in as a freshman, I thought I came in to get all the girls. Yeah. So just so just, just going, going to college, I thought it was, like, fun 
in playtime. I ain't really, I ain't really take it serious until one day, man, my mama called me, man, and I didn't know my report cards, my grades, my interim grades was going to her. So she hit me. She was, she was crying. She was just like, uh, she said, man, tell me, just tell me what I didn't do as a mom for you to be acting like this in college. Mm. And she B Mag and P. I, I broke down. You feel me? Cause I'm just relapsing. I'm rolodexing in my head, like all the sacrifices my mom and did for me. Mm-hmm. She had me, she had me leave New Orleans, go to North Carolina, come back to New Orleans because I wanted to be around my cousins in the city and I'm acting a fool and I ain't doing what I'm supposed to do in school. So once she hit me with tell me what I didn't do as a mom and all the sacrifices my mom made as far as like going to church. Um, we she never drove a day in her life, so everywhere we went, either we walk or we caught the transit bus. To, still to this day, mm. she don't drive. So I'm just relapsing, work three and four jobs just to take care of me and my sister. So that that's just roller decking through my head as she crying and as she talking to me. Mm. So I'm like, and I'm really slipping. So once I hung up the phone, my mom, I told myself like, my mom would never call me like this again like I'm, I'm about to find a way and from that point on i just kind of took off mentally on being like man i just want to make sure my mom and my sister straight and that's when i took off hey them, them, the moms hold hold a special man. place hey the mom <laughs> the grown moms boy they got a special place boy uh, in their heart boy the mom and the grown moms boy so i, I understand that feeling not wanting to disappoint you know, your mom. another two-part question for you i when you talk about being a being on the football field, Louisiana Lafayette, what made you want to change positions going into your senior year? And at what point during your senior senior year did you realize, you know, you can really play cornerback and you can you really can excel at that position? So I always I played running back. I never played corner, but you know, off of special teams, <clears throat> um, Coach Gary Bartell, he was a defensive back coach, and that's when we had Peanut. Uh, Kyrie A. Bear and Brian Dima. So actually, I was the shortest corner in our secondary when I became a corner. So I was the shortest and smallest corner. So at the time, he was like, Ike, I'm telling you, you super aggressive. Coach Gary Bartell, he was like, I'm going to change you from running back to corner. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why? He was like, man, you got all the tools. He said, that's what they're going to say. They're going to say you're raw. They're going to say you're inexperienced. They're going to say you're new to this position. But the defense we ran, which was a 4-4 defense, so all we did was play, man, I think mm-hmm. our only zone coverage was cover three. So I said, I said, Coach, man, I'm going to trust you on this one. Then Coach Tom Shaw at the time, he been telling me to move to corner. He was like, bro, you need to you, you need to slide. You need to slide the corner. But I was like, man, I'm playing running back. I'm scoring touchdowns. Like, my name getting the paper. Faster playing <laughs> offense than defense. But yep. he saw something I ain't seeing me. So, you know, before I even got drafted, it was the James Ferris, it was the Sean Barbers, it was the Sharper Boys, um, it was the Rod Woodson's, it was the Deion Sanders. Like, they they all used to train in New Orleans at the time. And I was I, I was there with them coming from high school. I just ain't know no better. So I wound up transferring from from, from running back to, to corner. And, you know, everybody was coming to look at Peanut, you know, yeah. but – you know, I, I guess like the fifth or sixth game, you know, my tape got hot because I was super aggressive, even though I was raw. I was coming up and smacking everything. So I guess they looked at my ceiling like, all right, this dude is super athletic. He got a high ceiling. Let's see what he can do. So, you know, for me, my go-to was tackling. So, you know, they, they was like, he'll hit anybody. He got the speed. We just got to work on the coverage part and see what he can do in the classroom. So, that's what happened. But if it wasn't for Gary, Coach Gary Bartell and Coach Shaw, I would I would have never switched it. But I just trust what they was telling me, and I just kind of took off from there. Man, that's dope. You actually spoke about leading into my next question. You spoke about Peanut Tillman. Mm-hmm. Tell me about the friendly competition that you and Peanut had when you guys became stars beside each other. It it wasn't really. I was looking up the nut. Like I was looking up the Peanut P. Like this dude is a technician. Yeah. Like, Peanut wasn't overly fast. He wasn't super athletic. He he had a high football IQ. And from his back pedal to him knowing what you about to do to him to his ball skills to that Peanut punch, 
Nut was doing that anyway. So mm. I'm like, man, if there's one thing I can learn from Peanut is how to be a technician playing this cornerback position. So Nut was ahead of the game when it coming when it came down to like a high football IQ, um, big corner tackling, knowing when to get in the field for the game, knowing when they're trying to attack you, how they're trying to attack you, and being a technician as well. So I just kind of like tried to mimic Nut when it came down to being a corner and understanding what he was doing. So, you know, at the time, big corners wasn't moving like how he was moving. Big corners wasn't having that kind of IQ in college like how Nut had the IQ. So everything, all the questions he asked in the meetings, all the moves he made on the field, I'm just like, man, I'm just about to go under his wing and see what happened. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I you talk about your career, your senior year, led to an opportunity to get drafted, right? But before you got drafted, Let's holla, let's go back to your pro day. Now, I played with you. I trained with you. I always know, always knew you were super fast, Pat P. Heck, you you trained with us in Orlando. Yeah, but right. Pike, is it true that some clocks had you during your pro day when you ran the 40 at a 418? No, no, that's 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 what it wouldn't people say, Cap. <laughs> that's cap. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I think my, that's cap. I think my fastest time was like 429, 427, hand speed, hand speed. Uh -huh. And me and my home, me and my homeboy always talk about man. If I if I was to go to the combine, ain't no telling if I was gonna be a stiller. Cause you didn't Cause get an invite. Yeah, because what Coach Shaw was doing, because Coach Shaw kind of came up with the drills to help the combine to do stuff at the combine. So what we was doing by Coach Shaw, I was doing. I was just that's what they do at the combine. So I'm like, damn boy, if I was at the combine, ain't no telling in front. You know, thirty two teams. How they would have looked at me because I would have been one of the sleepers who would have yeah. ran fast, who jumped high, drills was good. Like I was doing everything I needed to do for my pro day. So everything worked out for a reason. But yeah, what Coach Shaw did uh, leading up to my pro day, everything was done at the combine. So really, I just sat out. I sat out a whole semester just to train with Coach Shaw for like four months mm. and kind of took it from there. But everything he everything he did, I still do to this day training people so i feel like coach Shaw was just like ahead of his time at the time yeah i mean i i i, I can definitely vouch for that story because i had an opportunity to train with you guys down there in orlando going uh in the uh the opposite way in the uh in the lazy river going out to the uh, disney uh disney Wild World Center. Sport. Appreciate it. And, it, and it ended up being full circle with obviously you and mac being uh teammates and me having an opportunity to spend some time with you and your son in the locker room. And I see you guys strolling through the locker room. Uh, that was all, that was always uh, some good times that we had, but uh, Mac talked about your pro day. We're going to move. We're going to fast forward to when you was drafted in 2004 mm -hmm. then to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then you became a starter in 2005, which was the same year that you guys won Super Bowl 40. I know you got some crazy stories to tell us about not only when you became a starter, but that whole year <clears throat> leading up into Super Bowl Forty, yeah, P, that uh, that was my first year starting. So you know, I had to uh, really I had to work through the ranks, you mm -hmm. know. So you know, you got you got we had Ricardo Coca at the time. We drafted him the year after in two thousand four. Then we got Matt coming in his rookie year two thousand five. So you and know, the slick Willie Williams, yeah, yeah. So slick. So slick, Ricardo Coakley. Slick, you know, high second round draft pick, super athletic. I think B Mac can attest to this. Like mm -hmm. slick, slick, slick can jump out the gym. He can lift weights out the gym. He can play receiver. Right. He can play corner. Dude can do whatever you want to, right? From tussling him. Then you got Mac, highly recruited coming out of high school. If he wanted to go to Michigan, even though he went to Florida State, they don't <laughs> give up that number two jersey. So Charles <laughs> Wilson was ready to give up that number two jersey. If Mac mm -hmm. wanted to go to Michigan. So but the good thing about our room, P, like we all challenged and pushed each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, so uh even though Mac was a rookie during that Super Bowl run, Mac had a big significant role in the playoffs and during the season. So just like how I'm talking about Peanut, Mac was the same weight. That boy, that boy Mac backpedal was cold as a mother. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mac <laughs> was a technician and Mac used to come up. And, Mac do the same thing. He come up and bang as well, too. So, it, you know, they got that saying, iron sharpens iron. And really, that's what it was all about. So, 
just getting into that, just getting into that season, like the first game starting, because training camp, I can tell you, man, training camp was tougher than games, regular no season games, bro. At 14, and that's, me back. Man, listen, training camp, training camp was tougher. Training camp with Coach Kyle at the time yeah. was tougher than regular season games. Thanks. Training camp, training camp, bro. Training like, camp. Just the, the, the conditioning test, the fourteen forty. Like that's back two weeks in training camp. Uh, <laughs> my lower back, my uh, my man, lower back been right for, for two weeks. What man, you did to prepare for, coach? Man, listen, man. It, I, 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 <laughs> you I, knew you was getting fourteen forty. I, I, I trained, but the issue for me was, <laughs> I I came in. You know, I'm a rookie. I got all these sound vets because you remember the year before. Like you know, y'all was fifteen and one. Yes. So yes. they they were super, yes. they should have went to the Super Bowl the year before. Yes. Play the Patriots. We know you know right. get, whatever the case may be. So right. them boys already made men. I was trying to show them like I belong. Shirt off. <laughs> Correct. I'm fresh off the app machine. Back fresh wide. On. Man, wide back. We got fourteen forty. So the DBs we had to make it in a certain time. Pat Correct. B. My first five forties. I'm striking. I said, man, these boys, oh, yeah. I'm coming in first. <laughs> said, man, these boys ain't been working out. All I heard was Chris Hope say, hey, Mac, you better, you're moving too fast, Mac. I hope I'm in tip top shape. I'm down the side of the crib on the beach, man. I'm ready. Well, I got <laughs> that, that seven, eight one. The monkey get on that back, boy. That monkey, right. that old gorilla jumped on yeah, your back. That uh, monkey. Said, that that monkey. Gorilla. <laughs> hey, don't, that and Mike Tyson, the rest of them boys, man, coming through on eighth time. But well, that, well, them, that, that, that back and them legs start getting heavier, heavier. I heard because yeah. you know, Coach Kyle had that bullhorn at the end. Yeah. The line. yeah. <laughs> By the time I got to that 14 one song, like somebody shot me in my back. I just <laughs> I laid out across the line, man. I was down for about 10, 15 minutes, man. But yeah, but I, I right. That that training camp, bro, was bro. That was bro, training, bro. Like, and you know, Coach Kyle at the time, all he wanted was goal line. Oh. That's all he he ain't care nothing about no two minute drill. Oh. He ain't care nothing about no cool seven on seven. He Lie. wanted to see what he wanted to see where you was at, man. Lie. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to see. He wanted to see go line. Then back in the day, it was two days in the morning, Not real two days, and yeah, in the morning and in the evening. So in the morning, your breath still funky from last night, right? <laughs> so you ain't even brush your teeth, like you ain't even shower, so you got to go straight. And at the time we had we had some dogs, them boys used to put cleats on with seven studs with no socks. I said them people oh. crazy. I said, I, I said these people crazy. These people for goal line seven studs. Bro, <laughs> boy need ten toes down, man. Bro, all ten toes. And so Jerome well. is one of the backs, and Thunder Dan Dan Crowd at fullback with the man, neck. Jerome, so picture Jerome Thunder Dan and oh, Deuce man. coming from Philly. All of them ain't got no neck. All them got no ain't neck. none of them ain't got no neck. And as a corner, they scripted because you know they script plays, P. So yeah. P, they scripting the plays oh, yeah. that down, down in the round on goal line, a tall sweep to your side, <laughs> <laughs> just to see if you gonna come, <laughs> just to see if you gonna come up and hit. Willie said, Thug. Oh, what we used to say, I uh, Willie, Willie Thug. Thug. <laughs> Willie Thug. <laughs> Willie Thug. But check Willie your temperature Thug. real quick. What Man, Coach Collins check. say? Either you accelerated or decelerated. <laughs> <laughs> One to two, ain't no in between. One ain't no two. cruise control. Ain't uh -huh. no cruise control when you're driving. Either your car got no brakes, or you got real good brakes on your car. So which one you doing? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. them boys don't want to see no brakes. Out. You got to go. Hey, yeah, you them boys go. talk about your bad. That's 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 what I did <laughs> like about our group. But we used to talk about each other. We used to talk about each other so bad, Pete. But they everybody knew everybody cared. No question. Right. Once you got on that field, it was us versus everybody, right? Yeah. But we used to talk about each other. Peace, so so bad, so so bad. Don't, don't be so going, bad. Don't get caught on tape turning something down. Oh, oh, oh you won't play. Oh boy, I can only you won't play, that, bro. And it, it was that was my first experience, Pat, being around grown men. Like, yeah. like I owe five team, man. Man, it was a few a few times where we on the south side. I come in, sat. Oh, it's a week practice, weekday practice. These boys coming in smelling straight like alcohol. Like a brewery. <laughs> like a brewery. <laughs> no we come in, we come in, we come in. <laughs> we come in, we come in, we come in so loud. The great Dickie, the great Dickie was like, one time the whole room was so funky, he just had to 
stop. He had to stop the meeting. The defensive meeting was like, y'all know ain't no prize at the end of the bottle. Yeah. He said, don't try to read that note at the end of the bottle. Yeah. It's never no a good note. note. <laughs> ain't no good note. I'm talking about. Ain't no prize we used to come, we used to come with sweatsuits on, Pete. Sweatsuits on. Everything on. Just try to hide the leakage. Uh -oh. No working. The sun on used to be <laughs> swole. It's, All coming, it's coming through your hat pores, man. No hey, question. Bro. Hey, P, if 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 all I said was to Mac, because you know Mac don't drink, if I just told Mac, huh, he catching the DUI straight off my breath. No question. I say, all right, come on, Mac. Right, you got to, you <laughs> I already do know. Hey, I'm the rookie. I'm talking to the vet. All right, you got to do better than this. I got smell. You, right? <laughs> you smell like my uncle right now. All right? Hey, Mac, I'm trying to burn the candle on both ends of the stick. No oh, question. No question. And give them yeah. hell on the football. That's I'm yeah, like, right, boy, living I, like this. But then on the football field doing practice, oh my goodness. That's hey. like, how is this possible? Man. I said, these boys, these boys are mutants. Bro, like, tell me real. Oh, you, hey, hey, I right, tell them, <laughs> hey, Pat P. I so in 05, so we had a rookie. Well, heck, we, we almost every other weekend we were going to New York City. Every <laughs> every week. We had our I had my rookie dinner in New York. Every weekend right. we go to New York. Man, right, we right. we met trying to call on the losing streak. They don't right. find out we always in New York. Mm -hmm. oh. Party it, losing yep. it, party it. Yep, <laughs> yep. And justice, yep. we used to be in justice in New York. Yeah, so we used to be in justice in New York. P. That was Monday uh, night football. Yeah, so we used Monday to be in justice every every week. Every week in New York. So it got in the tabloids at the time. It wasn't TMZ at the time. It, <laughs> it was, was the tabloids. Tabloids. <laughs> so we got we got in the tabloids, and there was like all the Pittsburgh Steelers do is party. No question. So you know, at the time, the head man he was like, "I think y'all need to fall back and just chill with the party." That's what kind of started our losing streak to keep it one hundred with you. So we wind up losing. We said, "You know what?" Man, get back to it, bro. We need to get. It. We bring, <laughs> oh we oh we said. Let's bring Miami to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. That's what we said. Let's yeah, bring, bring Miami the to, to, the to, the to the top. Bring the bottom bring to the, the south. Top. Yep, to the top. And P, once we did that, I'm oh, talking about. My goodness, I'm talking about. We, we you talking about, I'm, If you if you ain't know no better, you thought you thought you needed a passport to come to Pittsburgh. Oh, because <laughs> P, that's exactly what I was bringing up though. Hey, 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 hey. hey Hey, we 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 were giving them so much hell on the football field. Coach Kyle told us one time, I don't know what y'all guys been doing, but whatever y'all been doing, keep doing it. Yes, keep doing it. <laughs> keep we doing it. it. Reckless. Okay. We gonna Reckless. keep doing it. Reckless. Hey, P, P, it, it got it got to certain teams, like certain teams, P. We will be out in a city. Oh, no question. So it was time to go to the stadium. So we wow. gonna get if we had one o'clock games, we was like, we're going to go out and we just going to party and kick it until it's time to get on the bus. And then we're going to beat whoever we need to beat. And we're going <laughs> to win the ball game. Oh, oh. And that's exactly oh, what happened. Atlanta was another one I second host. No, no, ain't lying. <laughs> we be in Atlanta, man. And oh, them boys Lord. back then in 05. Oh, Lord. All, all, them, all them boys straight out of the lot, out of the weight room. So oh, if the laws, when we go to other people's cities, we go oh. to the we got so many VIP sections, and boys say, hey, uh, man, shirts come off. Shirt. Come out your shirt. Shirts off. Shirts off. <laughs> every, every city know <laughs> when we was in the building. No question. Shirts, uh, that's still, still the boys. They Yo, got boys like the Beatles. <laughs> they, no they beetle, got they, no they, they got ass. their shirts off. They got hey, their shirts. Like the Beatles worldwide. Hey, young Joe World said, World "Young Joe said, man, I don't know who them boys is, but all I see is big backs and a lot of jewelry." <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, man, I be telling people all the time, like how we used to. What them boys doing now? I didn't know, man. First of all, we've been doing that. But we was doing it with each other, like it, it uh, wasn't no. We, we, we yeah, had, we, it was a love, bro. We we, yeah, we yeah, did everything was, together. Yeah, everything. Bro, it was everything. gonna be a squab. It was gonna be a squab of everybody. Then we AP. gonna talk about you were wrong at the end, but during that time, no nah, man, we shirts off, whole shirts section off. locked down. It's them Steelers. <laughs> this they're gonna steal. Hey Pat, <laughs> yeah. Hey Pete. So pitching the off season. Mm. Oh man, we doing a tour. And what I mean by tour, 
Boys we getting our own tour buses. Yeah, we had an N one bus. Remember, it's the N one bus. We boy wind up getting the N one bus, right, Pete? <laughs> so we get the N one bus. So we're gonna go to Fort Lauderdale. After Fort Lauderdale, we're gonna go to Tally. After Tally, Memphis. we're gonna go to Atlanta. We after Atlanta, we're gonna go to Memphis. Memphis. After Memphis, we're gonna go to New Orleans. After New Orleans, New Orleans we're gonna go to Houston. Like we just Damn. doing the tour for your camp. So whoever Memphis. had it, wherever you was from, yeah, you, you had set a camp. the camp up. And yeah. all we asked was make sure grandma or grandma or auntie cook some some of y'all food. Cook. Somebody gotta have a home. That's cook. all yeah. that's all we wanted. No question. This is no what we was doing, Pat. Right. And obviously over <laughs> Pat Peak, man. We linking up, bro. We 20 Pat, deep. This is what we're doing. We deep. Man, Dude, I ain't man, we, like this is my life, man. man we, we deep. It didn't matter where we went. They said, yeah, we went, bro. Them still from Rock there. Hill. Yeah, from Rock Hill. From Rock Hill. To South Florida, oh, man, all man. the way sliding over on the tour bus to damn near Houston, Texas. And we ain't even talking about flying. We ain't even oh, talking about going. We're going to one bus, oh. and one bus. Hey, I right, tell, tell Pat P. State to oh. state. The, uh, <laughs> Cincinnati playoff game when I was on the sideline crying. When y'all oh. had that jumping. <laughs> oh, listen. Listen, AP. Hey, P, right? The tension was high. No uh, the tension. No yeah. Yeah, it was, 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 going, it was somebody going to de- jail kind of tension no on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody was going to die. Somebody was going to die. The boy, the Ike field. was so, they were cussing. They were so different. Oh, After Carson, this people was. Ryan Offerlin hit Carson Palmer in the leg. That's when he tore his ACL. Correct. Right. Now, Kimo, yeah. now mind you, P, Kimo is a good dude. Don't want to cause. All yeah. he want to do is kick ass, go home to his family, got Correct. a construction building. Bid business making money, none but money off the yeah. field than he making on the wrong, field. Man. Yeah, keep on thong, thong sandals. It, it don't matter how sand- it, that's all he keep that's on all doing. Keep on doing construction deals before <laughs> the snap of the game. No question. Million right. dollar deals. Fruit and then go and then go on the field and club or center or go or left or right. No question. Right? I mean, brother, and get to the brother, quarterback. Brother, 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 brother. <laughs> so he wound up hurting Carson. And it and they saying in their mind he, he did that on purpose. Yeah, and we saying in our head like, little do y'all know he's the nicest guy on the that's defense. starting on the team right now. Right, right. So they all in the hoop all day and Peasy going crazy. Oh man, Joe oh. Porter going crazy. He going crazy <laughs> on this side. Uh, cousin. So you, so you know, I'm like F it. I'm like shit. This is what we doing. Shit. Oh, I might well go crazy too. <laughs> I'm going crazy too. So Mac. Doing a TV timeout, we look over to the side, <laughs> Mac and tears. Oh no! Nigga said, "Nigga said, what the hell, Mac crying for?" He beg, he begging Dicky oh, to call nickel package. Nigga, I he he beg, he just to get some of that action. He won't be on the field so bad. P, he begging <laughs> Dicky like, please just call. I don't care. I don't care what formation, what personnel is. Oh, Dickie, can, you please, can you please call please. nickel, please? I just wanted to hit. I just wanted to. Hit, I wanted to get in the fight with somebody. It was lie. It was lie. Them boys out there. That lie. thing was rocking so. It was, it was so lie. intense. I said, I want to get out here and fight with them boys, please. It was lie. Back in them days, it was a lie. lot of regular formation. You know, correct. Twenty-one personnel, eleven personnel. You know, so there wasn't really a. You didn't see nickel a lot of time. Man, they, they thought crying. somebody. Had, they thought I had got bad news. Them boys said, "Man, somebody died." <laughs> I can see no, you right crying. now with your fist all balled up, ready to get oh. out. He was crying. I had, you know, I he had my pacing. wrist tape. I he had my wrist pacing. tape, so my veins pop. I had my, my, my elbow. Uh, hey, you had uh, the high whites uh, on or what? No question. What the, what the, <laughs> yeah. what the, what the hell? You know he had the high whites on. And you know, you know he, we, we used to call Mac Mac Mongoose. That was his nickname, no Mongoose. Mac Mongoose, that's what they called me. I used to be low yeah. baby. Yeah, Mongo, man. He's got me He's called Mac right Mongo. And I want to fight. I want to get out there and fight. Them boys. Hey, listen. Fight. I said, man, please call Nickel Coat. Please. Hey, man. Hey, all right, tell me this. What's this up, Pete? Don't drink. This man don't, 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 don't cuss. How, 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 how he become one of the, the most aggressive ones out of the group? <laughs> it was a bunch man. of pits out there. I had to fit in. Yeah, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you around, I'm going to go back to TC. Oh. When you around some illiformant ass dudes, some some dudes ain't got the screws loose. Oh. When you around them kind of dudes, Man, like yo. it make yeah, you no, just no. tap. It just it just make you tap into that side that you already got in you. But you, you ain't know you had it. You ain't <laughs> even know. 
You ain't even know you. And once Mac, once Mac saw, it, he got a he got a teammate from New Orleans. He got a dude from Bakersville, California. He got Rick, a quiet I, assassin who loved God, but he'll 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 talking, baby Jesus, Troy. Yeah, baby yeah, Jesus. Baby he he loved he loved God to death, but love he definitely God. gonna try to he gonna he gonna try to send you to God. No <laughs> question. Go get on this yeah, bad he side. God, but, yeah, he loved God, but he at the same time he's gonna try to send you to God at the same okay. time, right? Right. <laughs> what you what you want the man to do, man? No question. You like, got he was just dog, James Perry knock anybody <laughs> screws loose. Hey, Put P, with the he, Oh, you surrounded mean, by with violence. The <laughs> Foot with the bra- the dude was just what surrounded up, by violence. Oh, question. No, he was surrounded by violence, bro. Hey, Pat P, I heard one time we was playing. So- Who we were playing? I ain't gonna say which teammate told us to the ref. Like you remember this? We were playing uh, in the, in the, uh, in Oakland. What yeah. they hit us with them personal files because it was so it was yeah, yeah. with personal files for verbiage. Yeah, that was Not- that was no, foot. No, that, no, that, that was foot. That was foot. And Justin Vargas. I did. I just told you we didn't put no name on what no, it. I did though. You shouldn't have got me on. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why you put me on. You told me the hey. mic was hot. I told you I had something for you. Hey, well, Foot didn't say this. Somebody else told the referee this. He said, "You know what, ref? I hope when you get home, oh, that was yeah, that was your house burned down with the dog in it." Yeah, that, oh, that, that was. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm saying from a football standpoint, Justin Vargas and Larry Foot. I got to get the names right. Them two boys played at Michigan together. So they temperature was hot against each other. Hot. The so how them boys home. was talking, how them boys was talking to each other. We was like, Foot, who the hell talking to you like you know, that? Foot, you talk a lot of cash out there, boy. Yeah, foot, foot. Like foot. Little, little, little <laughs> did we know they was tight and it was cool. That's how them yeah. boys talked to each other. But the referee at the time. The little swole referee who lift weights all the time. Y'all know who I'm talking yeah, about. No question, no question. So he felt he <laughs> felt like he can't control the game, right? So I had dog at the time told him, man, listen here, man. If you get in my MF and way one more time, and he he said, What? He said, Man, you know what? Man, I hope your house burned down with your kids in it. I said, Oh. He said the dog, the dog get it. I'm sorry, the dog. I With said, dog I said we I all said, it. He said that. I said this is I said this what we at? We got another flag. <laughs> got another flag. For so a like, referee to stop the game, P. Yeah. Stop, stop the, game. the game and bring both of the head coaches wow. in the middle of this the field him. to be like, y'all gotta control y'all players, bro. Cause oh, I can't have I can't have this dude talking to me like that. Man, we I can't, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I we, cannot. Man, that's we, crazy. We were like the bad boys, man. That, I cannot. That, that that team in 05, man, it was a bunch of it was a bunch of uh, doom. it was a bunch of uh, thugs. And when uh, I say those words, I mean in regards to football. Cause we right, were looking correct. for altercation. Correct. Like it was like if you want smoke, you're gonna get smoke. I saw I saw I get in a conversation with somebody who wasn't even talking to him. We doing pre-game warm-up, and I just start cussing the dude out. The band said, Who are you talking to, man? I ain't even say nothing to you. I had a whole conversation with Buddy, and Buddy didn't say nothing to him. No, I'm going I'm to catch you. I got you. So now, here come the rest of the cavalry. They just found one. They found right. one. Yeah. That's all like, attack. Let's go. That's, all That's it. That's all. I'm, like, I'm like, man, these boys, these boys look off. Real. Hey, listen. I'm trying to figure out what the is going on. And hey, it was listen. like personal. You thought they had legit beef. Nah, real. You thought you had <laughs> legit beef. Hey, I. When you talk about that 05, you know, team, when did you realize, like, we had a shot to win it all? Like, at what point did you realize, like, oh, shoot, like, bro. When Coach, we, when, Coach we when, when we lost to Indy and Coach Coward said we'll be back oh, for the playoffs. Monday night, win. that Monday night game. Yeah. When we lost, when we lost, when we lost to Indy at Indy, when Coach Coward was like, though. don't worry, we'll be back, but when no we question. be back, we we'll be back for the playoffs in January, and that's when we we're gonna win the whole thing. I was like, okay, yeah. I yeah. said, I said, okay, I said, okay. And we from that it. point on, yeah. Re- really, from that point on, you kind of locked in and took off from that point on, because that was your rookie year. Yeah. So from that point on, that's when you became like, that's when Co- that when Coach won't tripping on calling nickel, because mm-hmm. you did you you displayed enough that you need to display to be like. You know what? We can take a back out and put Mac in. 
And from that point on, that's when we like, that's because don't forget, they had two Hall of Fame was sitting over there at a wide receiver. They had a Hall of Fame tight end, oh, a right. Hall of Fame running, running back, back, a Hall yeah. of Fame, uh, and a Hall of Fame quarterback, and a Hall of Fame center. So you're looking at all these HOF was sitting over there on the offensive side. And a Hall of Fame coach, Tony Dungy. All right. All right. So you you seeing all that. So shoot, from that point on, that, I think that's when the light switch hit for all of us. And we just took it to a whole nother level. When when we uh hey Pat, so <clears throat> we lost, we got blown out that Monday night game, and Coach Kyle gave us that speech, and we all believed it. We didn't second guess one word he said. Correct. So fast forward, you know, we just talked about the Cincinnati run when we beat Cincinnati. Uh, the second round, we go right back to Indy, and I remember it like it was yesterday. We it was like revenge because we always knew they were a good team, but they didn't play our right. style of like we right. wanted to fight, we wanted to beat right. you up. That's how we wanted to play. We start off on five. <clears throat> so fast forward in the fourth quarter, I you remember the game sold up, P Pat. We already know the game is a wrap, but we so disrespectful. We talking to the fans. Ike no boys oh, cussing yeah. out all the fans because it's so bad. The RCA dome, the, the stadium, the, the bleachers are right close to the bench. So you had right. maybe a few yards between the bench and actually right. where the fans right were sitting. Down. So right. they were heckling us. Since the first game when they blow us out. Now we got revenge. Man, we talking so much cash noise. I right. them boy saying disrespectful things. It's nothing but so it's nothing but bling, bling coming out. Yeah. Hey, Ike, so, so we're not watching what's going on. All we knew was yeah. Jerome and the offense got the ball inside the five. Right. It's a wrap. He the closer. Right. And so all of a sudden so, the stadium went crazy. So <laughs> We we MF and everybody, right, Pat? <laughs> no question. So we MF and everybody, kid to everybody, grandma, everybody. Kids, everybody, grandma, right? uncle, grandpa. Yeah. So we MF and uh everybody. So they everybody like go from frowning and smiling. So they go from frowning and smiling. <clears throat> so that's when Bussy home with the ball and the goal line. So they're telling us look back. We look back, <laughs> but this how I knew we was gonna win it. So when Bussy fumbled, and it went to a TV timeout after that, P. When Bussy fumbled, I remember Dickie kind of like in shock. Yeah, he, he was just shock. like still yeah. for a minute. And I remember clearly Pot Dog James Ferrier. He told him, Dickie, snap out of it, snap yep. out of it, give us the call so we can win this damn ball game. That was Pot Dog and when said. I heard Pot Dog say that, I said, the season over with. It's a wrap. It's yeah. a wrap. It's a wrap. So once that happened, Mac, that's when your plays came into effect. I think they tried you three times and they lost that three times. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they tried you three. Yeah. Win, I believe, right? yeah, yeah. They tried you three. They lost three. And that's when you that's when you like solidified that game for us, then the kicker wind up missing the field goal, and we was all the way, yeah, we was all the way good. Oh, we but don't. yeah, I remember, I remember that, I remember that time out, clear as day, when Pot Dog said that to Dickie, I'm like, ooh, like everybody just cool, calm and collect. Ain't nobody stressing, ain't nobody tripping. All we was taught the whole season. This coming from Dickie as a, as a, as a DC, he didn't care what the offense did. No question. All. No question. All he all, all he worried about is defending a blade a of grass. grass. A blade of grass. That's all. That's all. That's all he cared about. No we never talked about what the offense did. Didn't care what the, how the offense was doing. Didn't care nothing about that. All Dicky from the time I played to Dicky me to uh, Mac played. That's all that man cared about. Yeah. We ain't, don't don't talk to me about nothing. What the offense doing? What we need to be doing is giving the offense back the ball as many Give times as possible. Or hitting people as hard as we should throughout the game for them to tap out. That's all I want to do. And yeah. from that point on, I said, "Dang!" I said, "Dicky didn't figure it out." So, how, how I explain Dicky to a lot of people? Like a lot of us had individual goals, P. Mm. But I guarantee you, one of them goals was not letting Dick Lebo down. No question. I, I guarantee. I get. And coming from a coming from. Well, we play cornerback position, P. Coming from our perspective, when you have a defensive coordinator who played our position and, and understands 60, 60 plus every, of them interceptions, 60, 60 plus? 
63, 64 interceptions, played on the opposite side of night train lane in the Hall of Fame. In the Hall? And, and oh. when he understands oh. your position as a defensive coordinator, you don't want to let the man down because the man oh. ain't never yell. He ain't never yell. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Hey, the, really, the only, person, the only person Dick and really yelled at was me. And the reason why he'll yell at me because he, he used to give me the warning before. Oh, I, yeah. I this was about to happen, and I used I to tell get, you. yeah, yeah. I used to yeah, yeah. I got your dick, I got your dick, I got your dick. <laughs> and then it wind up happening, and before I can come off the field, he, you know, he he walking, he walking, he walking to the field goal with me. He already on the field. <laughs> so oh, real one, bro. yeah, yeah. He, oh, well, like bro. he was one of them goals. You ain't won't let Dicky down. He was no. grandpa. Dicky was grandpa, but you ain't never won't let. You ain't won't let him down. Everybody had their own individual goals. But you ain't never want that dicky down. We were so well That's coached. A, our tip sheet uh, used to be like a, 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 a having the answers uh, for the text. Our bro, tip we, sheet. Oh, bro. we used to say we used to say y'all might score fourteen points today. Oh yeah, on the yeah, field, yeah, yeah. like bro, y'all might. We were so well. We were so well coached, and I no tell people this all the time. Oh, uh, we, we I had some Hall of Fame coaches on both sides, offense and defensive uh, side. The owner was a Hall of Famer. Yeah, Kevin Colbert wind up going. He gonna wind up going to the Hall of Fame. Coach mm -hmm. Kyle already in the Hall of Fame. A bow in there. Dicky, yep. in the Hall of Fame. Right. Mike T gonna get there. Mike Mike T gonna wind up getting in there. Ray Horton probably was one of the best Play DB on. coaches ever, as far yeah. as like getting you prepared Tip sheet. for the okay. game. Okay. Yeah. Cornell yeah. Lake. Two years. DP, um, Dan Perry. DP, Dan Perry. Like, so, I played. All them guys that. played, though. They, they played. played. Like, yeah. yeah, what we do? And I uh, yeah, so even Co Coach Butts. Butts, yeah. Linebacker like coach. Coach Mitch. Coach Mitch, the first black Alabama player with, with, uh, with Tom. Paul no, Bell. Um, Paul Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Like, bro, what you want yeah. me to do? And we ain't bad. even going on the offensive side. We ain't even talking about. Ken Wizard Hunt, a young B.A., a young, yeah, a young B.A., but like, what y'all want? All I played with was greatness right. from the top all the way to the bottom. And they, so, and they all had attitudes, too. Hey, I, listen, I, 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 hey, listen. It was a bro, reflection used, of our coaches. Hey, listen, before we went on the field, but y'all might score 14, but y'all might, depending on how we, if we lazy, y'all scoring 14. Yeah, like, if right. we lazy today. That we, we were confident. And that's that when we beat Indy, it was like we already knew the Super Bowl was ours. Oh, yeah. Man. We was already, remember, we ordered our Super Bowl trophies. And when I got over here, like, and during the playoffs, man, Pat, we are. We put man. an order in from Ray like, Horton. Man. From Ray Horton. Yeah, Ray Horton, no question. We, are, we already, bro, we already, <laughs> we already knew. Yeah. We, once we, once we did, because don't forget, we played like out the four teams, there was top five. Offensively, the NFL. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You had yeah. Denver. You had Cincinnati, Denver and Seattle. You had Indy and Seattle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are the top offenses wow. in the National Football yeah, League. Yeah, yeah. At, at the time, 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 we was on a roll. We was on a roll. That's what they. I want they. Coach Cowardick, you, you can go on the plane with PJs, boy. No question. It he ain't care what you. What he. he he yeah. won't want about how you look. <laughs> he just want to. Hey, hey, Pat, you know I'm that double. That double. I ain't even, even coming in with my diggy outfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want my diggy outfit. It wasn't tripping. Lord, we go ahead and put in work. Yeah, man. That, man, listen. Man, coach, coach won't trip. And coach, like, I don't care what y'all want, man. That, that ain't got nothing to do with how we're going to play. No question. Right. No. So yeah. you, you, man, listen, man, listen, listen, listen. Listen, Pete, it it was it was <laughs> it was wild, boy. Okay. It was wild, boy. Oh, it was wild, boy. We we, we, we got we got to have a we got to have a docu series, man. We got to have we really oh, okay. and we ain't even talk about the plane rides. Oh, oh man, plane ride, boy. Man, we ain't talking about training camp with FIFA. We FIFA came out. We did the FIFA tournaments, right? Oh, no, what? You remember when we was doing it on PS? We was doing the FIFA oh, tournaments. Oh, players, yep, yep, yep. Oh, we had bad uh, tournament. Man, dude, boy, boy used to go to sleep at six to get up for six fifteen. Oh, yeah. Hey, Pat. <laughs> I said, man, y'all boys don't want to go to sleep. We got training camp. We ain't going to sleep. <laughs> we ain't going to sleep, Pat. We straight from the room up hey, all boy. night, either playing cards, or playing, playing video games, straight down there. Cause them boys, man, how you make hit the weight room? Hey, listen, how you how you take the bed frames out the room? 
<laughs> and collect mattresses just to make a wrestling ring and call it WWE and training oh, camp. Well, yeah, we got to <laughs> come on, bro. Come on, bro. Man, wrestling. P. I thought we had peas. We were talking about that. The boys wrestling. Deuce. The boy what? wrestling. Man, the boy wrestling, man. Bro, man, going toe to toe, man. Like it's a in w training camp, man. Training throwing camp. The, throwing the bed camp. frame out. No question. You better have a good, a mean scoop game, boy. We ain't got no scoop game, boy. They get up under you. You're out of here. Your legs going next, to the roof. Yeah, hope you're next, strong, because you're going to get a free concussion with no helmet. No question. No. <laughs> legs go to the roof. Our training camp was crazy, boy. We didn't get no sleep. I said, man, I got to try to get me some sleep. I can't oh, do right, well, well, I thought I was going to get cut my rookie year, man. <laughs> I was second round. I said, man, I ain't gonna get no sleep. Man, I'm gonna get cut. <laughs> boy, boy, we're dangerous, boy. Weight room for the man, it, it, early pack, in the pack, morning. Pack. pack. No pack. question. Pack. All pack. I want to do is abs. I never see a guy do abs every hour in the hour. That's it. Boy, hour. Weight room used to be packed. Oh, no, boy. Question. no question. Pack. question. Jump it. DJ enough. DJ I, I, I pod up to the thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you, sir. you. you you hey. and your Florida boys, all y'all boys use a joke. I slide across the floor. Yeah. That's all y'all use a joke. No question. <laughs> For I'm real. Number one joke will be I slide all the way across the floor in the way. For room. real. Between yeah, steps. For real. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, yes, sir. All right, real quick, man. Let's transition real quick, man. You have obviously gave us some great stories from the no Super Bowl to the, to, the, to the card games, to the training camp. But uh, what made you want to get into the scouting department and the business side of uh, the football? Was that like your end goal? Was that something that yeah. happened periodically yeah. throughout your career? Nah. nah, so actually, actually, that's a good question, P. So actually, like, I was doing it while I was playing. Mm. So they used, to, they, they used to let me come up in the meetings and just listen. And then, you know, after listening, I'm like, man, that's what I want to do. So... You know, Kobe used to give me a few guys, like five guys, to evaluate. And, you know, I used to have to talk in front of everybody, blase, blase. And I did it. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just looking at it from the standpoint, like, I always felt like at the time in the locker room, we knew who was good and who wasn't good. I just felt like just growing up with scouts naturally, we just don't know the detailed part of it. P, like, if, if, if we on the park, you a captain, P, I'm a captain. And we playing basketball. What you gonna do? You gonna pick? You gonna pick the first best dude? I'm gonna pick the second best dude. Right. Then you are gonna pick the third and fourth. Blase, blase. So it used to go like that. So I'm like, the only thing I'm missing is how to write it down on a piece of paper. But I always thought I had an eye for talent. Mm -hmm. I just, I just need to put that down on paper when it came down to my evaluation. So I just wind up doing it. Wind up learning the game. Wind up understanding how they did it. So I'm like. This don't even feel like work for me. Like it did, I feel like I can just do it. Like I love doing this. So once, you know, Omar always told me, like, man, if I ever get a job, just have your phone ready. And Omar he ain't never lied to me. Like mm -hmm. he he wound up catching a job and he wound up giving me one. So from that point on, I told, oh, I said, oh man, I don't want to make you look bad. Like I'm all in with you. This, 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 this what I'm doing. Matter of fact, I text him that a day. Like, this what I'm doing. So we wind up, you know, he wind up hiring me. And, you know, my second year, now they got me on the circuit. So they never saw me, they never saw me work in front of a crowd. So now they they didn't see me do the Alabama. Um, mm -hmm. I got to slide over there to LSU um, tomorrow to be exact, uh, P. So they actually saw me in person like, yeah, this dude here really, this dude here really, really into it, you know, so. You know, from that point on, but I got goals, I got visions, I got like personal stuff I want to do. And one of them is like trying to get a rank or two or three on the front office side. So mm -hmm. I would like to help the organization and oh, get it, you know, a few rings from from that standpoint. So I'm on the college side. You know, you got the college side, you got the pro side. Yeah. I'd rather stay on the college side. So I'm all in with it. But I always, you know, felt like it was never work for me you know of course I had some bumps in the road but I you know I thought that was my plan but God had something else for me so he was mm -hmm. like I'm just paying you for some other stuff and then wind up being the scout so I, I take it I take it 100 I take it real serious and to be honest with you, the Rooney family Mike T and O they really like embrace and they really see what I'm doing so I think they, they I think they more excited of off of what I'm doing than I'm doing so 
Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's a different change up when it comes down to the meeting because I talk a little different, I write a little different, I explain a little different. Mm-hmm. Like I just do everything like how I'm talking to y'all. That's how I talk in the meetings. So mm-hmm. when I'm describing a player, that's how I talk. But you know they they really feel like I trust my eyes. So if I'm standing on somebody that I really like, I'm not changing my opinion regardless on what the whole room might feel like. And mm-hmm. you know so far I've been hitting on the on the people I've liked and that's doing good on other teams so that, that's just a testament to everything hey so is there anything that you can get like you said you in the college aspect of it so you know what the, the pro scouts are looking for i know that your son ivan just committed to notre dame uh this right. december and we right um he's going to be on the college um stage here sir coming, right. coming up is there any advice that you give him going through the college circuit and also as he wants to get ready for the NFL draft someday. No, I don't even, I don't even, it's crazy. Him and I got a, him and I talked about this three years ago Mm. and we had a 15 year plan, 18 year plan. And we've never talked about draft for NFL. We just said, man, let's stick to the plan and follow the process. You know, so he's, he's, he's way, He's ahead of the game, so he's better than I ever was as far as, like, athletically. Um, he's – what he took from coming into them training camps when Coach T and – when Coach T let him come through them training camps and sitting in them meetings with Dickey, um, he's took in that – he soaked all that in. He's took the locker room in. He's took the work ethic I had in, and he just kind of built himself, you know, I, I would say probably locked in at 12 years old. So the dude – the dude come to my crib. I saw I made my garage a gym. So him and his homeboys, they'll come 4, 35 o'clock in the morning and come work out before they go to school. This is going on two years, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, everybody's seeing what he's capable of doing now, but, you know, you know the saying, man, they don't see the work you put in. So what you doing when the camera not on you? Right. So the man been putting countless hours in of work and now he's just reaping his benefits. So, He's just a way better individual. I don't, I don't give him no advice, and the advice I do give him probably, it's probably like tips off of football. Now, when it come down to off the field stuff, me and his mama handle all that. But all he want to do is play football, Pete. That's mm-hmm. all that dude. That's he don't go out. He ain't going to no prom. He don't care none of. He don't drink. He don't. He don't want to do none of that. All he want to do is play football. That's 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 all he want to do. Yeah. So What's he matter? locked in. Uh, he's six. He's six, six one eighty one. Okay. So he he just he just he just a baby. Really, yeah. really. You know, I tell people all the time. This this is third year on the Vertimax. I'm like, man, that Vertimax. That Vertimax stuff. Ooh, bro, okay. that, hey, bro, that Vertimax, man. That that dude. And he started to see, and his homeboys started to see. So, so a lot of his homeboys starting to come work it, work mm. out with him. That Vertimax, something else. It ain't it ain't fun. But you, you see results. But I just tell them trust the process. And I do tell them as a parent, like, have fun being 16, 17, 18 years old because you can't get them years back. No question. No question. I got a question for both of you guys, you know, talking about Ivan committing uh, to uh, Notre Dame. You know, Pat, you was a high-level player. You know, we all played in the league. Pat, you went top five. You know, what are your thoughts, you know, as a parent, I going through this process with your son, you know, what were your thoughts about what Prime said in regards to Shador and Travis saying that, you know, if they got drafted certain places, kind of will pull the Archie Manning type deal and say, no, we're not going here. For both of y'all guys, I want to hear y'all thoughts about that. You can go, P. Man, for me, um, you know, when I was growing up, you know, obviously I felt like to be drafted, you know, there was, it was always a... a an accomplishment and honor to be drafted, no matter where the city was. And I felt like if I was going to be a top five pick, I'm a top five pick for a reason. So it's my, it's not my job, but it's all, it's, it's, it's damn near that they're calling on me to come there to be their savior for their team. Now it's up to me if I can do it or not. Um, but I feel like nowadays the way the college game is going to where they're they're giving these kids the leverage that they're that that that, uh, that they're able to have right now on the college level, 
I think it's given it's given Prime the ability to do that, you know, because of the NILs, the the money that they're making, you know, on the college level. And hell, if you if you if you think about it, Prime is, you know, not arguably the the the, the best one of the best defensive players, if the best def uh, defensive player to, uh, to, to ever play the game. But you know what he said, what whatever he says, it goes. So he he has the mouthpiece of a of of an Archie Manning. But if I was in that position, I wouldn't have been like, oh, I'm not going to a certain team if they drafted me. So I look at <clears throat> it's only it's only the managers beat prime to the punch. That's all. They just had they just had their kids 15 years earlier. Yep. Than Prime, if you think about it. Because when Prime played, he broke all the rules. He was a pioneer. So he, he he broke he broke the standard on guys getting paid. He broke the standard on look good, play good. He double sported professionally from baseball to football at a high level. So he was a pioneer and he broke barriers for a long time. So that's a one off. So I I I wouldn't say that for my son because I'm not prime. You know what I'm saying? So whatever if it was to get down to whatever I whatever Ivan whatever's in set for Ivan, that's in set for him. Like prime a little bit different. You know, so he he's at a different platform, but he's been at a different platform in his life for a long time. So the, them guys, oh. them them guys, everybody can't do what he says he wants to do. You yep. feel me? So I just I just look at it, Mac, like the man has just beat him to the punch on doing it because he was going to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, he already knew the value. He almost did that with his draft, essentially. Correct. Yep. Correct. Anybody who called him after five, he said he ain't picking up. Right. Y'all like, you, wasting <laughs> y'all time talking to me. Like mm -hmm. if you if you below five, y'all wasting your time, bro. Cause I'm right. I'm gonna be gone. So he always <clears throat> Prime has always I call him Uncle Prime. He's always betted on himself in college. Right. In college, mm -hmm. he's always so he always went a went against the grain. He always bet on himself. So now he's at a he's at a point right now where he gets that kind of royalty. Like right. how the man is get on saying what he want to say. I I personally think he was going to do that anyway. It's just somebody else just beat him to the punch because his kids was younger. Yeah. yeah. I, I know for me, when Archie did it years ago with Eli, I didn't like it. You know what I mean? Because I kind of feel like when you get drafted, it's an honor and it's your right. job. It's part of your responsibility to kind of change the course of that program because they drafting you high because they were sad the year before. Right. Now, in regards to Dion, there are a lot of parents that will hear this and try to do the same thing, but they don't they have the do same thing. No. First of all, you gotta you gotta have you gotta have you gotta have the son to do that. Yeah. Like your your and, son, your son gotta be if your son ain't top five, yeah, you you ain't and second of all, you're not prime. Yeah, yeah that, so. that's the thing. So but all one thing we do know about the league though. We do know this about the league because of our ties to the NFL. When the NFL wants to set a standard, they can uh -huh. set a standard. Right. You know what I mean? Because one thing they know about, one thing we know about the NFL, the league was moving before we became a part of it. And it's going to keep moving when we're no Don't get, longer don't get it twisted. It's a billionaire's boys club. No, so when, when, whenever, yeah, whenever they want to shut it down, they can shut whatever down. You remember last year when Lamar Jackson said, I want to be traded. I want to be traded. You remember how many teams came out publicly and said, we're not entertaining anything with Lamar Jackson? We've never heard that before. And a lot of it kind of stemmed from Lamar not having representation and right, kind of right. things different. Now, right. those teams that came out and said, we don't want him, I will, I'm willing to bet. I would, they wish they could kind of change that mindset. But remember, Atlanta came out and said, we don't want him. I mean, there were so many different teams that came out and said, no, nah, we want him. You know what I mean? So well, that's you know just that's just coming from the top. <clears throat> yep. Exactly. That's them boys. Now don't don't during the offseason, them boys gonna stick together. No now question. during the season, they're gonna compete. And of course, they all chasing that Lombardi. Right. But during the offseason, 
they they, they they down they down here in the old where these owners meet. Oh yeah. yeah. So so you already know they 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 gonna stick. It's a billionaires boys club, and they gonna stick together. But yeah, don't you it, ever get it. And if they get tired, if they feel like y'all trying to pit, if they feel like y'all trying to penetrate or break too many bar- barriers, shut it down. They gonna they gonna shut they gonna they gonna shut it, shut it down. Down. You have the power to do so. So you know we'll we'll see how it all play plays out. But that's that's been some big you know big discussion gotcha. with what Dion right, talked right. about. And uh, you know, I tell you this much: the light is on them. The light is on Shadur and Travis. We know they extraordinary yeah. gifted players, man. Yeah, the right. light is on them. They have opportunity to do some big time things this year as an individual and with the Colorado Buffaloes. Before we let you go, Ike tight, we're gonna transition mm-hmm. to the supreme right. part of our show. I got two questions for you, Pat P. Got two questions for you. We want your Check honest answer. Check Rapid fire. First question I got for you: Which Super Bowl team was the best? Two thousand five. Or the two thousand eight. That's two different teams, Mac. I, I, that, I, that, I, yeah, that, it, that, it's that, a two that, minute that situation. Two... You can't. They can't score. They can't get in field goal range. Five zone coverage. Sam five zone. You lock Mac, in, on, pump and run. You got. Mac, I, I need your best effort. Mac, Which, listen, listen. That's two. So the 05 team was bare knuckles. We fought. We fighting outside in the street. Everybody make a circle. That 2008 season was everybody put the surgery suits on because we about to get surgical and we about to do surgery on somebody. That's two different. That's two different styles. That's two. So you gotta look at like you gotta look at it like this, bro. Mm-hmm. If anybody like boxing. That 2005 team was Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That 2018, I will go Devin Haney. Oh, you can go, you can go Muhammad. Because we did surgery. We we tap, we 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 spot right. people. All right. You, you, you can go, you 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 can go Muhammad. So let's yeah. let's say let's say the great RIP Muhammad Ali. So that 2005 was Mike Tyson. We ain't can we MFing everybody, a young Mike in his prime. Oh, like yeah. We, yeah. we just ruthless, right? A young Mike. Mike with 2008. the 2008. Yeah, that two that with the gold in his two. That 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 two that 2008 was float like a butterfly, stain like a bee. So it's 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 hard to compel. It's 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 just hard to compel, bro. Like the two styles, because that's two different personalities. Because Pot Dog was a different personality, so that 08, he was a different kind of leader. And Peasy in our 05 was a different kind of leader. So really, really, you just take on your leader's personality. So Pot Dog was more business minded. We still, we still gonna beat him. It's gonna be surgical. It's gonna be surgical. Like it's gonna be a slow death on. Mm. <laughs> but at 2000, that 2000 was like. Let's go ahead and get him over with quick with that Mike Tyson. Like, we ain't going past round number two. We're going to go ahead and knock him out early. I got things to do at night. (laughs) Speaking of knockouts, which team you hated the most or player uh, that you played against in the AFC North? Really, I I felt like we was the most hated. So I I didn't didn't feel like, I, I didn't feel like, I didn't, I disliked everybody. Mm-hmm. That didn't have black and gold on. I respected everybody, but I disliked everybody who didn't have black or gold on. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's 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 just what it that's just what it was. No question. Now my one of my fave was Ocho. Like I love Ocho. Ocho just yeah. a good dude. That was one of my fave to play against. But as far as like I disliked everybody though. If you if you want wearing that black and gold. It was it was a mutual understanding that I dislike you. No question, no question. All right, my last question for you: Your most underrated teammate with the Steelers in your career? Most underrated teammate, man. I got I got to I got to go. I got to go with Deshae Townsend, bro. Hey, I got it. Herbert's named after him. Drop tight, drop the shape, <clears throat> bro. We you. I mean, he coaching now in the NFL. So yeah. I mean, and I, I the way I, the way I move, I got it from Deshae. So as soon as I got Deshae, you know me. As soon as I was a rookie, 
Shea gave me his four expedition, told me keep it for the year, get lost, find out what's in the city, learn the city. I didn't even know Shea. Did, did, didn't even know him. He was like, look, I got extra car, just do what you need to do. And we're going to meet at this time in the morning. And I'm, I'm going to put you on the board. Not put you on the board, but I'm, I'm going to. They, they they said you didn't. All y'all ran was man coverage. It's time. It's time to get the IQ up. So I was like, this dude don't even know me, mm. and he and he doing and he doing this for me. So from that point on, I felt like everybody who came in under me, I had to do the same thing, just at a different level, all because of Shay. You, you got on the field, bro. Yeah, it was man. all Shay did that uh-huh. out of love. No question. Like no question. Shay did that out of everything. I did for anybody after me is what the shade did my rookie year. So that's really all I knew. So I and the shade just happened to have a high football IQ. Now he's coaching in the NFL. Wasn't gonna wow you with numbers. Wasn't gonna run the four six, I mean four, 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 three. Wasn't gonna jump out the building, but wind up playing 12 plus years because he knew exactly what you was about to do. There you go. No where he's supposed to be. <laughs> My last before we let you go, Ike, your fondest moment as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Man. Carry that, carrying that casket when Mr. Rooney when he died. Mm. When Paul Paul Rooney died, everybody knew we had a great relationship. But when he died, and I went, I went to the uh to the funeral and I was asking where the boys was at. And it was like, nah, it's just the family. And then when I got that call from uh, Art, Art was like, man, I think my dad will want you to be one of the Paul bearers for his funeral. It's gonna be you and the grandkids. I was like, dang. Then when I go to the funeral, we sit in that cathedral and I see my teammates on the right of me and I see politicians and you know, G GMs and owners sitting in the back of me, I was like, man, this dude really did, he really did mess with me. So that, that, that was that was probably my fondest moment. And Pittsburgh really just adopted me as a as a as a player and as a as a son. So I'm like Pittsburgh adopted son, but I mean Mac you know the city of Pittsburgh, man. I think Coach T said best man, you win Super Bowls in Pittsburgh, you're on scholarship for life. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and that's and that's and that's and that's a true statement. So, really, that's probably my finest moment. Like that's that's my most prideful moment. Me being a Paul Bear, all out of all them Hall of Fame greats and everybody who put a Pittsburgh still a jersey on, that they family thought I was part of them. So, and it's crazy we talking about this because in December, um, Dan Rooney, his his other son. You know, he was introducing, you know, me to some people from Ireland. He called me his brother. Like, this this my brother right here, Ike Taylor. I, I just looked at my head like, dang, like, the Rooney, they really do mess with your boy. So, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's just what it is, P. Man, that's awesome, man. That, 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 that's a dope story. And I saw it firsthand. I saw yeah, it Max firsthand. Saw it firsthand. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Rooney, in fact, he rocked with Ike the long way. Matter of fact, Mac went to... Mac went to Arizona and Mac came back the the year after and me and Mac just chopping it up. And I'm like, man, you want to come back? Mac was like, shh. I said, Mac, let me make this phone call. So you know we need you back. You, you know we need you back. Yeah. I said, mm-hmm. I can't I can't do nothing with the numbers. I I just need to tell them that we need you back. Yeah. Hey, I <laughs> know the trade happened right when I was having my camp yeah. down in South Florida. Yeah. After that, they, we were all down they, there at the fountain. Yep. At the phone blue, them boys yeah. wind up figuring out the numbers. Come back. But I, I, I said, man, we need, we need, we need Mac back. It was like for real. I said, listen, we need Mac back. Shit, show, show did Mac. Mac came back. I, that's man, real, I, that's I, real. I, I hit, I hit me up like he was the owner. Sure yeah. did. <laughs> what you want to do? I said, what you mean? Of course. What you talking about? He said, well, I don't know what they're gonna do with the numbers, but. We need to come out. I said, shoot, say no more. And I already knew the relationship, so I already knew I wasn't capping me right. as the kids. They right. already knew it was right. 
Yeah, he went camping with me as a kid, say nah, day. But I, I tied was tied in heavy, and he still is, and clearly doing big time things with the organization. Man, we, what we it. don't don't worry, I. You know what? Like my, like my good mama say, man, speak it into existence, man, and it's it's gonna be only a matter of time for old Ike Tight Taylor GM for somebody organization. Somebody. Somebody. Hey, speaking into existence. No I'm, I'm, gonna receive, I'm gonna receive that. I'm gonna receive yes, that. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. I'm gonna receive it. Hey, Ike, man. Listen, I know our audience, our viewers, they enjoyed this episode. Man, thank you for joining us, man. 12 year, two time Super Bowl champion with the Appreciate Pittsburgh it. Steelers, man. Now doing big time things with the organization. College scout for the Steelers. Oh, by the way, can't forget one of a kind cigars. You're a big time yes. cigar lover, cigar fan. Yeah. Before you go, tell us a little bit about your, your your cigars that you have in motion right now. Man, make sure y'all go to howardgcigars.com. Make sure y'all pick up that one of a kind. It don't matter. Either you're going to smoke that Sumatra or you're going to smoke that Connecticut. That Connecticut, I call that my breakfast cigar because you can smoke it in the morning with your coffee. It's real light. Or if you want some after after 12 o'clock, make sure y'all get that Sumatra. Make sure y'all go to to howardgcigars.com. Also as well, you ain't got to be from Pittsburgh to represent Pittsburgh. Make sure y'all go to shop 412, 412 well. no question. Yeah, for all the gear yes. and the clothing. Yes, so just tune in, keep tuning in. I want to appreciate, I want to uh, thank Mac for bringing me on board. Second round, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I don't know if y'all know Mac. Check his background. Mac was... One of the, I think, the number one corner coming out of high school ah, yeah, yes, for indeed, Lauderdale um, to for 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 a school to even consider on giving up that number two, and that two was retired. That's letting y'all know how <laughs> Mac was. Um, also, Pat Pete, future Hall of Famer. Um, no question. I saw I saw Pat Pete coming out of high school. So Pat Pete, you know, we all knew he was special. That's one thing I like like about our crew. When we see one, we see one. No I think Mac Mac told. said something about Pat being his cousin a long time ago and how special he was. I got an opportunity, Pat, coming out of high school and seeing how the young man moved. So, Pat, you just lived up to your expectations from that fifth pick all the way to being a future Hall of Famer. So that future McFadden, yeah, that McFadden bloodline run deep. I don't know if y'all hey, know, I, but that McFadden when, bloodline run okay. deep. Whenever that time comes, when Pat go into Canton, man, we got to get together, man, and push them together. Oh, oh yes, we sir. definitely get together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't no if and buzz about. We definitely get together. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully we uh all things are covered. If y'all tuning yes, in sir. to no this, to this podcast, yes, sir. y'all already know everything covered on here. No question. And don't forget, Ivan, Ike's son, will be a fighting Irish. He when he he reports to yes, uh, he he doing Texas early enrollment. No, early enrollment. Yeah, so yeah, he's about he to be a early. senior right now. Yeah, so he he doing all his classes now, so he can roll early. I say no more. So yes, student man. athlete at his finest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep my eye out for my guy Ivan, man. Appreciate also, you. If he need any insight, I got you know Harrison Smith, my guy. So we can get them all plugged okay. in around campus uh, as well. I say less. Yeah, Harrison Smith, Appreciate great time, you. great from Notre Dame, great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But all right, man, pleasure. Go ahead and. So, uh, light one of them stogies up, man, and I honor, man, and have you a good night, man. <laughs> Until next time, all things are covered. <laughs> what I said, Pat? Party over. <laughs> Party over. <laughs> yeah, money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Money, 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 money. Ain't that funny? I got haters. Yeah, they watching, but I know they love me. Riding around the city, plastic cup of C-Rock. Bigger and I'm blacker. I am on that Chris Rock.